World SBK in 2023 was absolutely outstanding. That doesn't get you pumped, I don't know what will. As you can see, all the factory teams on the grid are the same as last year. The number one is on the front of the Ducati. Top back Raz Gaglioglu trying to take it back from Alvaro Bautista and back to Yamaha. Big name rookies such as Danilo Petrucci, Remy Garda and Dominic Agata, as well as the hard charging Axel Vasani, make it a sensational 2023 grid. 12 rounds, 36 races. This is the 2023 World Superbike calendar. It starts in Australia at Phillip Island before moving to Mandalika and Indonesia. Europe welcomes World SBK at Assen before a trip to Barcelona. That's round four. Misano round five. Donington Park marking a halfway point. Excitement builds as World SBK returns to Imola. Then it's the Autodrome Most in the Czech Republic ahead of summer. After the break, Magni Cor is round nine. Aragon round 10. We're beachside in the Algarve. Portugal and Portimao round 11. Jerez closes out the season in Andalusia. Round one in Australia, a traditional curtain raiser. 2022's Titanic Trio had a target on their back. They were the riders to beat, although the rain fell down under. The first race starts of the year, the moment the season gets underway. Alvaro Bautista blasted off from the front row and grabbed the whole shot ahead of top rack Raz Gatlioglu, whilst Jonathan Ray was on the charge in third in appalling weather conditions. Ray got ahead of Bautista by the end of the opening lap, keen to start 2023 as strongly as possible. Axel Bassani had a big moment at turn eight, but Michael Vandermark had a bigger one. The Dutchman high-sided out of action at the hay shed. Thankfully, he was OK, but it wasn't the start that he was looking for to his 2023 season. Bautista was soon back ahead of Ray on the run to Stoner Corner. A daring move in the dry, let alone the wet. Bautista, like in 2022, keen to back a victory in all conditions right from the start of the year. Although he was almost too keen as he had this huge moment at turn eight. Thankfully, he stayed upright. Further back, drama. Rookie Danilo Petrucci tangled with Xavi Vieje at turn 10 and later copped a one-place penalty down to P8. Drawing first blood in 2023, Bautista won ahead of Ray and Razgat, the ugly behind him. Celebrations clear for all to see. I was nearly to, to crash sometimes, uh, but I can save the, the crash and fortunately I can finish the race. No? So I'm, I'm so happy. Race two was a firecracker too, with Bautista out front head of teammate Rinaldi and Locatelli. But behind, drama for Alex Lowe's and top rack Razgat Leoglu down at Miller Corner. It was not the ideal weekend for top rack. Misfortune for the 2021 world champion in the wrong place at the wrong time. Meanwhile, in the battle for fifth, Jonathan Ray was going backwards. Philip Ertel charging on through. Whilst the number seven of Ika Laquona moved himself up into the top six at turn one. Out front, Bautista was in dreamland as he opened 2023 with a hat-trick completed ahead of Rinaldi and Locatelli. A Sunday to remember for Ducati down under. This was a sign of things to come in the first half of 23. As for Andrea Locatelli, his best start to a World Superbike season. I have a lot of confidence. We can continue to push on the bike so well. He's... Unbelievable, and to, take, to get a podium here in Philip Island is something special. Round two, Mandalika in Indonesia for one of the most picturesque rounds of the year. 
Albert Bautista may have won race one, but he'd suffer his first dramas of the year in the Super Bowl race. After race one left Jonathan Ray down in ninth, he was keen to strike back, perhaps too keen. Going off the narrow racing line, he saved a huge rear end moment, but Alvaro Bautista didn't save his, and the Spaniard was out. There would be no repeat of his 2019 season opening domination, down and out of the Super Bowl race, leaving him in P10 on the grid for race two. Meanwhile, a first win of the year was back for top Brack Razgat Lioglu, leading home a Yamaha 1-2 with Locatelli second, the first for the manufacturer since 2021, whilst Alex Lowe's was third. Top Brack style was absolutely back open for business. First, I'm say I'm really happy because finally I'm uh, the winning today. And you know, uh, this is the short race. Yeah, everybody pushing the, the for a good position. It's always tough, them, uh, them short action pack races. I'm really happy, but we have one more this afternoon and we try and do it again. In a restarted race two, Ray's miserable start to 2023 continued with a fast crash at turn six. Thankfully, he was okay, but it was his worst start to a season since joining Kawasaki, pushing above and beyond the limit. Race leader Michael Ruben Rinaldi didn't have a spare soft front tyre for the restart and was thus a sitting duck despite making a break for it in the opening laps. Bautista easing ahead in the closing stages. Further back, Razgat Lioglu also found a way through, but Rinaldi looked at least on for a podium until he went wide at turn 10, allowing Honda's Xavi Vieje to come through for P3, a dramatic final race in Indonesia. In the end and across the line, Alvaro Bautista was back on top, Razgat Lioglu second, but Xavi Vieje stole the show with a maiden world SVK podium with Team HRC. The celebrations for Honda said it all before an overwhelmed Vierge took to the microphone in P3 for the first time. I'm the, the happiest man on, on earth now. I just miss my family here, my girlfriend. Race by race, we are getting better until I achieve the point. So thank you so much. Finally! Elsewhere, Jonathan Ray fumed after a disastrous opening two rounds. Assen in the Netherlands for round three, the Cathedral of Speed and the Cathedral of Dreams, always a fan's favourite. Alvaro Bautista's championship lead was growing as Razgatlioglu chased, whilst Ray looked to fight back as World SBK hit European soil. However, that wasn't going to be the case. This time in race two, having mounted the podium twice during the round, his difficulties continued. Jonathan Ray out with a front end fall. Now, his bad luck had come with him to one of his favourite circuits. Out front, Bautista shook off the opposition, making it eight wins from nine races ahead of Top Rack and Locatelli. In the battle for fourth, Axa versus Bassani went the way of the double world super sport champion, but Bassani was as ever humorous in his media debriefs. I try to, to replay Valentino Rossi in the market. <laughs> I'm not Valentino. <laughs> <laughs> Round four called, and there was a special announcement. Alvaro Bautista's future had been decided. I will stay here, racing again. After possible retirement talk, he was the first rider to sign for 2024, and he'd go on to dominate the weekend. Elsewhere, teammate Michael Ruben Rinaldi had Axel Pisani to deal with in race one. The two traded paint in the early stages, with contact at turn three, Bassani making his feelings very clear, and you knew he'd retaliate. So, at turn 10, with Rinaldi slightly wide, Bassani drove under him, and Rinaldi's race ended in the gravel, and wasn't too happy with his compatriot's move. Never one to take prisoners, Bassani carried on, but was issued a long lap penalty. For Rinaldi, his race ended in the gravel, and perhaps sarcastically applauded his fellow countrymen the latest in a long rivalry. Bassani took his long lap penalty and dropped down and out of podium contention. Whilst back at the front, it was the old foes and old rivals, top back Razgat Lioglu and Jonathan Ray fighting it out for P2 on the final lap, eventually going the Turkish riders way. 
It was another marvellous display by Bautista who stormed to victory at the first of three home rounds as his season just got better and better. The team were delighted and this time his wife and daughters were there to greet him in Park Ferme. Who's the daddy? As the reigning world champion shared a special moment with his team and loved ones, there was a big fallout elsewhere. Come Scott and Austin Microphone. I don't know what happens to his uh, brain because uh, after I overtake him, he ran into me on purpose. His dirty move. And, uh, but I think he lost more than me today. Someone in red is not very happy with you. Says that you made a bad move and knocked him off. Hey, more or less. So, yeah, I think it's uh, a normal race. Uh, he tried to, to overtake me and touch me, and uh, after I tried to overtake uh, him, but we touch, and I think it's a normal incident of, uh, of race. If uh, he has a problem with uh, me, he can come to my box and we, we can speak. Frosty relations off track, tricky conditions on track. A late range chair in the Super Bowl race caught out Jonathan Ray, who hit the white line going into turn one on the final lap. In the battle for the podium, Razka and the Oglu led the charge for second ahead of teammate Locatelli, whilst Ika Lacona came through for P4. But nobody could touch runaway leader Alvaro Bautista. He doubled up on Sunday for a third triple of 2023. His championship lead becoming a chasm, 69 points ahead of Toprak in second. It's impossible to be better, no? I, mean, I felt very strong during all the weekend, I enjoyed Every laps, every race, to do this here is something special with, the, with this incredible fun. After the busiest Barcelona round in World SBK, Mazzano had the most fans of the year, over 70,000. Ducati's VIPs were present, as was a certain Andre Iannone, a MotoGP star, Franco Morbidelli. However, coming into the round, huge news that top rack Razgat Lioglu would be leaving Yamaha for BMW in 2024. He explained why. Sometimes you need a new challenge and uh, the new motivation. I say if I stay in your superbike, I need a new challenge. Now we did this. And the race in itself, a story of what could have been for Danilo Petrucci. Crashing out of podium contention, team boss Marco Barnamo could barely watch. At the front, you guessed it. Alvaro Bautista with a special yellow livery made it a 12th win of the year. Although this time joined by Michael Ruben Rinaldi for another 1-2. The Ducatisti in admiration, the company's CEO Claudio Domenicale was likewise elated. The party started on Saturday for Ducati. The Super Bowl race saw Danilo Petrucci once again feature, but not how he'd have liked. At turn two, he collided with the GRT Yamaha pair in Dominic Agata and Remy Gardner, with both of them crashing out. Petrucci able to continue. Elsewhere, a familiar rivalry between Bassani and Rinaldi once again ignited, with paint swapping at Tremonto and at the Curva del Caro where Rinaldi forced his way back ahead in what Pisani would go on to say was not a normal move. Petrucci, for causing the crash at turn two, was issued a long lap penalty, which he served. Whilst Bautista was all over top rack for the lead, he blasted on through down the back straight and took the lead just at the right time, with the red flag coming out. The results were declared, Bautista pinching a win from top rack, who was absolutely Furious. The cause of the red flag, Danilo Petrucci taking out Ica Laquona at Quercia Corner. Both riders on the ground, but thankfully conscious and relatively okay. As for Yamaha team boss Paul Denning, more bad luck. Race two was all about Raz Gatlioglu versus Ronaldi for P2, but in the closing stages, the Italian made a mess of turn one, clipping the back of the Yamaha and going down. A disaster for the number 21, who ended his home round in the gravel. Bautista stormed to another hat-trick. 
Razgat Lioglu second, and there was no irony lost on Axel Bassani. After arch-rival Rinaldi crushed out, El Boccia picked up his first rostrum of the year with a massive hero's welcome. It's incredible, I'm as in feeling. I'm really happy to do a podium at home. Uh, it's always special. Donington Park and our trip to the United Kingdom. The birthplace of World SBK in 1988 and the scene of more excitement 35 years later. After a win in race one, Bautista aimed for a record-breaking 12th straight victory, something that had never been done before, but Raz Gatlioglu had other ideas in the Super Bowl race. Ray led the lion's share of the 10-lap race, but Raz Gatlioglu came through with two to go, whilst Bautista found his way ahead of the 65 on the last lap for second. It came too late to challenge for victory as, at last, Raz Gatlioglu halted Bautista's win streak. El Turco had returned, Stop Rack style was back, and it seemingly came as quite a relief. Thank you very much. Finally, I win again, and especially Donington Park, you know, for me is very important. And I am always uh, the, uh, remember the last year with the three wins. I have the plan, I'm waiting the last lap, but uh, the plan is working. Turco is back, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Race two was all about Danilo Petrucci. After the disappointment of Mizano and the head in hand shot of Marco Barnabo, fortunes turned around in the UK. He made his move for a first podium on Jonathan Ray in the closing stages and he'd go on to finish inside the top three. Bautista returned to win again. Raz Gatlioglu was second, but there was a fresh face on the podium as Petrux crossed the line with some of the best scenes we'd see all year coming from the Barney Ducati pit box. The entire team were absolutely elated. We did a, a great job with the, with the team and this result is for them. I'm so grateful. I love the British fans. Can't wait to, to race again here. Round seven and Imola. The circuit welcomed World SBK back for its 75th anniversary. The hottest weekend of the year. Always a classic and packed full of fans. Could this be a turning point? In the 2023 title race. A full grid at Imola, a sight for sore eyes, and race and action really did erupt from the start. An epic battle in the opening stages did World SBK's return to the track full justice. Home heroes are out in force, Bassani leading until this enormous moment coming through the opening sector. Whilst El Boccia stayed on, his challenge for victory faded. Locatelli back ahead of Bautista and Razgatlioglu. Razgatlioglu put on this bold move on Bautista at the Variante Alta, one of the best passes of the year, around the outside, leaving the Spaniard in third. Three abreast into turn one, Razgatlioglu came through on Locatelli to take over at the front, whilst Alvo Bautista followed through into second. The Spaniard then set off after Razgatlioglu as Locatelli continued dropping back, this time to Jonathan Ray. But in Bautista's quest to chase down top wreck, a massive moment coming up over the top of the hill towards the Variante Alta. Jonathan Ray zipping on into P2, but not for long as Bautista powered through with his daring move down towards Ravazza. What a spectacle! The reigning world champion then chased Top Rack again. A very similar manoeuvre to the one he put on Ray, but this time on a blue machine. Through came the championship leader, and that is where he'd stay until the end of the race. Ducati winning at Imola. It's what dreams are made of for their massive fan base. Bautista in a league of his own once again as he came through the chicane to cross the line. The championship lead now at a massive 98 points. Top rack, a 100th podium in second. In the Super Bowl race, a different story. Razgatlioglu pounced with two laps remaining into Piratella with another mega pass. Bautista couldn't respond, and despite the Turks sliding into the final chicane, he'd beaten his rival in a head-to-head -head for the first time this year. 
However, he did it the hard way, as he explained to crew chief Phil Marron and Park Ferme. Hey, traction not working. Map not working, but not stopping. Yeah, not stopping like uh, off. Not working. All the time not working. First touch gas, no traction. Imola was the place where Alvaro Bautista was beaten for the first time in 2019 and when the opposition started to answer back. Four years on, it was the setting for his first mistake. A crash at Turn 3 was the first blunder of the year of his own doing. As Gatlioglu took full advantage as Bautista sat it out by the side of the track. Surely not a repeat of his rookie season. With the number one out, a land of opportunity, and Axel Bassani was fully aware with this huge pass at turn one down the front straight. And that was a sign of things to come as he caught up two top back rounds at the Oglu and going into Toza, led for the first time with eight laps to go. His fan club were going mad in the grandstands. Bassani riding well, riding like he has proven he could, now against the heavyweights of World SBK. Top back Baz Gatlioglu had other ideas. The 2021 world champion found his way ahead in the closing stages, down into Revarza. But Bassani didn't give up without a fight. Back at him immediately. The crowd on their feet, cheering their home hero, only for Raz Gatlioglu to come back through immediately after. 13 feature length races before, all won by Bautista, but not anymore. A huge shift as Stockbrack style won race two. A hard fought second for Axel Bassani, who once again got his fans on their feet at home, whilst Jonathan Ray was third. Raz Gatlioglu, however, had smoked them to prove he's not done yet in 2023. Last three laps, I passed uh, the Axel, and uh, I'm very happy because uh, this season I am waiting every race weekend. Uh, this moment, the championship is not finished. Most in the Czech Republic, round eight, and our last before summer. Czech president Petr Pavel was in attendance. Championship leader Bautista stranded in P14 on the grid. A huge opportunity for top rack to claw back points. But who doesn't love a flag to flag? Axel Bassani, after missing out at home in Italy, was keen to make amends, but on wet tyres on a drying track, the likes of him and Alvaro Bautista would soon need to pit, even if Bassani was the race leader. Elsewhere, top rack was making mistakes with his all intermediate combination. Bautista was in the pits, losing 17 seconds due to a front wheel change issue. Bassani eventually came in, whilst Jonathan Ray on intermediate tyres didn't need to stop and had actually played a masterstroke. Without a win all year and just eight podiums, this was Jonathan Ray's return to the top step in 2023. Raz Gatlioglu took P2, Bautista only 12th. The intermediate tyre gamble paid off for two of World SBK's Titanic trio. And my goodness me, the scenes in Park Ferme spoke a thousand words. These results aren't coming through a lack of effort with me and my team and everyone in my corner. So although it's a conditions win, I, I convinced myself from the grid that this is my opportunity, you know, take that gamble. And then one of the most dramatic most races we've ever seen to send World SBK into summer in style. Top rack Raz Gatlioglu with some of the craziest late braking you'll ever see in motorcycle racing. Raz Gatlioglu versus Bautista in a race long fight. The championship could be less than 45 points difference between the two of them going into summer if Top Rack was to win. And he was going all out to make sure that he put himself in the driving seat. Every single lap into turn one, Bautista would be nearly ahead. Only for Raz Gatlioglu to coast into the corner to retain P1. This went on all race and each time it was more and more dramatic. After numerous attempts on the outside, Bautista switched to the inside. Surely he had it by this time. And no, 
Top rack sweeping across to pull off one of the passes of the year. And it looks even better in slow motion when coupled with Andrea Dossoli's reaction in the box. Top rack pulled away. It looks like he had it in the bag. But then, just when you thought he was home and dry, six laps to go, disaster. A crash on the exit of turn two saw his charge come crashing to an end as Bautista went on by. It would turn out to be a rear tyre failure that cost Toprak and Yamaha dearly. The points gap was set to be slashed to 44 as things stood with six to go from a high of 98 just four races ago. But now it was destined to be back in the 70s. Raz Gatlioglu was unharmed and made it back to the garage. And there were no points on offer regardless of how or why he crashed. Elsewhere, Ray was battling with Petrucci for P2 and keen not to yield to the World Superbike rookie. The two went head to head on the final lap all the way through the first sector with Ray emulating top rack style of braking. However, Back at the front, Bautista the winner for his 50th World SBK victory. Petrucci storming through to second in the end, ahead of Jonathan Ray with Bassani a close fourth. Even the race winner was at a loss as to what exactly happened to top rack. I don't know he, if he had a problem or, or what because he crashed in a strange way. Races are races, no, and until the checker fly, everything can happen. After summer, it was France and Magni Corps, top rack territory, not just in results, but for the fan base too. The crowd loved it. Elsewhere, Garrett Gerloff was a hero for BMW, storming to a career first pole. Gerloff got beaten on the run down to turn one though by a fast starting Alvo Bautista. Whilst Michael Rubin Rinaldi, who had been told he wouldn't be staying with the factory Ducati team prior to the round in 2024, was out to prove a point. But it was Razgali Oglu, likewise in contention and leading the way. However, soon, big drama. Bautista, for the third round in a row, had his form book turned upside down with a mechanical issue that caused this time at turn five. Just as he came out of the corner, the bike didn't want to. And the team couldn't believe it. He managed to restart and resume, but his top 10 hopes had ended. Teammate Ronaldi got his elbows out with Razgat Lioglu in the battle for first, shoving him off track at turn 11. However, Top Rack was obviously going to respond after that. Just a few laps later, we paid the compliment. And of course, in true Top Rack style, did it at the same corner. Rinaldi went off track, rejoined, just about avoided Top Rack Razgatlioglu on the run down to Chateau d'Eau. Top Rack taking the lead and going unchallenged from there. It was a race win in Magni Gore and the stoppy over the line now becoming a tradition in France. The most race uh, for me is uh, the bad luck. And finally, uh, we are here again. And uh, you know, this track, my favorite track. The Super Bowl race had friendly fire between Bautista and Rinaldi. As the championship leader took out his luckless teammate at turn five, when they looked good for a double podium at least. This freed Razgat Lioglu as Bautista fought back to P2, albeit with the front of his Ducati clearly damaged. All was good between the teammates post-race with apologies accepted, but Toprak had won again. Io quando ho visto che c'era lui dentro ho fatto un po' così, però io ero nella mia linea, infatti quando te sei arrivato ho detto cazzo è arrivato uno lungo ma non avevo visto che eri te. È, è, è impossibile, è impossibile. Eh, quando sbaglio io la frenata cado io, quando sbaglio gli altri cado io sono sfigato. <ride>
Round 10 and Motorland Aragon. It's the final quarter of 2023 called. Firmly Alvaro Bautista territory in terms of results and a massive support. All he had to do was keep cool and deliver, as crew chief Julio never said on the grid. Race one couldn't have been more opposite. Crashing from the lead with a safe advantage. It was a fourth consecutive round where drama had halted the championship leader's charge. Losing the front at turn eight, he was able to remount, but way downfield and well outside of the points. It was a costly crash and another round which hadn't been plain sailing. Thankfully for him, teammate Michael Ruben Rinaldi was on hand to steal valuable points away from title rival Vazgat Lioglu as he fought for race victory with six-time champion Jonathan Ray. And he really did have to fight. Ray looking for his first dry win in over a year. Getting ahead down the back straight, Rinaldi would clear off, leaving Jonathan Ray to deal with top rack Vazgat Lioglu, who was waiting in his wings to pick up second if he could. And he did. Coming down into turn one with just three laps to go, Vazgat Lioglu slithered through to at least do some big damage to Bautista's championship lead. After two years away from the top step, Rinaldi was back to winning ways. But teammate Bautista was having a nightmare. A second crash, this time on the final lap. Even if it was from the lower reaches of the points, he got no points for sitting in the gravel. A race one to forget at Aragon for Bautista, the championship leader. And the team could barely believe what they were seeing. Teammate Rinaldi was elated in Park Fermé, proving his worth despite still looking for a ride in 2024. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, an uh, incredible day for me. Uh, it was tough uh, last few months, you know, uh, but uh, we were able to don't give up. I cannot say in words how happy I am, but uh, it's been uh, tough and now I'm here on top of the podium and uh, I, I, it's like a dream. About Easter, an opportunity lost. Bautista needed to bounce back and he did so in a cracker of a Super Bowl race. The Titanic trio put on an extraordinary show in the closing stages. All three getting stuck in and their elbows out in a frenetic 10 lap battle. Bautista, Ray, Razgatlioglu swapping paint. Bautista back to third, then back up to second. Vazgatlioglu relegated. He thought about coming through, but not even Toprak could make that work. On the final lap, Ducati Power propelled Bautista into the lead, going into the same corner where he crashed out in race one. Although the mistake wasn't repeated. He'd go on to double up in race two, and Bautista's authority had been reasserted. A classic Super Bowl race at Aragon, although Jonathan Ray would have thought he had that one firmly in the bag. It wasn't the case. Bautista now had an opportunity to be champion next time out. Touching down at Portimao, Vazgat Lioglu was aiming to fly high, but there were other peaks at Ducati. Bautista won race one and thus secured them the Manufacturers' Championship, whilst the fans were waiting for what would be some of the greatest world superbike racing ever seen. Sunday's ferocious action started in the Super Bowl race. Top Rack led the majority, but Bautista, who could be champion in race two, wanted to put himself in the best place possible. Coming through the final corner, the number one cranked in the power and drove under top rack to the line. Smashing his windscreen in frustration. There were contrasting scenes everywhere you looked. And wait until you see what happened in race two. 
An unbelievable start to Sunday action in Portugal. Anything you can do, I can do better, would be the phrase to sum up the mentality of both Bautista and Razgatlioglu in the final race of the Portuguese round. Toprak needed to be inside the top two to keep his title hopes alive if Bautista was to be the winner, and the Turkish star left nothing on the table. Each lap, the Ducati powering ahead on the front straight, and then Toprak's outrageous break-in somewhere around the lap to try and stay ahead and stay crucially in contention for title glory in 23, no matter how slim it was looking. It was all building to a massive crescendo. Going into the final stages, Bautista got ahead, but then made a mistake down in towards turn five with a lap and a half to go. It all came down to one stunning final lap, both absolutely on the limit, both putting in Super Bowl race laps, pushing the boundaries and leaving nothing for granted. But the inevitable was always going to happen. Top rack, try as he might, just couldn't resist Bautista on the run to the line as the Spaniard denied the 2021 champion what would have been one of the greatest wins of all time. Elation at Ducati, anger for Toprak, smashing his screen so hard his airbag activated as well. The scenes in Park Ferme telling the story better than any words ever will. I think uh, Toprak was uh, his best. Um, we saw the, the best Toprak uh, of the season. He tried everything, everything. He has nothing to lose. So I just have to pay a bit of attention no? because he was uh, very aggressive and I have to, to be calm and to don't make mistakes. I didn't, didn't think, just I did. I went outside, um, full gas. The bike was spinning and at the end I can, I can overtake him on the outside. So yeah, I'm really happy. I am uh, great fighting with Alvaro, race two. The special last lap. Every corner I am trying to best because uh, I know the last lap I need to win because uh, after Super Bowl I am very angry. But again, we lose the last uh, corner. I tried a different way, but it doesn't work. With a 60-point lead, Bautista just needed to finish 14th or higher as World SPK returned to Jerez for the title deciding round. Leading every lap from the start and relatively unchallenged, it was a champion's ride for the reigning world champion. The Bautista fans had packed into Jerez to see their man repeat his achievements of 2022 and make it back-to-back -back titles. Scenes of sportsmanship and respect brought tears to many eyes whilst Bautista likewise celebrated in front of an enormous crowd. Special gold leathers were a must, the fireworks and extra that all deserved. Perhaps Bautista can give us the last word. Wow! Increíble! Increíble! Ganar aquí en casa es brutal. Es brutal. No hay palabras. Celebración máxima, disfrutando con la moto. Álvaro, porfa. Ah, ganar un título es difícil, pero defenderlos más. Y hemos hecho la defensa. The defense is completed. And as you can imagine, the celebrations didn't stop there. Ganar un título es más fácil, es muy difícil. Defenderlo es aún todavía más, pero hacerlo en tu casa es algo increíble. Entonces... In a restarted Super Bowl race, Alex Rose's season ended in the gravel at Turn 1 after a collision with Top Rack. He was able to walk away but declared unfit for race 2 and it's hardly a surprise when you see why. In the race itself, one final battle with their respective teams. Rayon Kawasaki versus Razgatlioglu with Yamaha. The story of the last four seasons. 
They traded places on numerous occasions before it eventually went the way of Ray, the P3, going into turn nine. Bautista may have won the race, but the headline was that Switzerland's Dominique Agata was P2 for a career first podium finish in World SBK and a double World Supersport champion was already lining up the party at the end of the day. For sure, um, big pressure release to finally take the, the first podium. It was a little bit a roller coaster this season and uh, I hope we, we can uh, celebrate tonight something special. There was one final thing in 2023. Emotional moments for Jonathan Ray and top rack Razgat Lioglu, with race two at Jerez being their final races for Kawasaki and Yamaha respectively. With Ray replacing a BMW bound Razgat Lioglu, emotions, nerves and sentimentality all headlined ahead of an epic race two. Could one of them make the dream come true? It looked like it was going to happen. Ray rolled back the years with a stunning start to race two. But it came crashing to a halt. Leading the race by nearly a second, he lost the front at turn two. And despite a bent handlebar and almost no footrest, he valiantly rejoined to finish his final race in green, even if he felt blue before he would have liked to. It wasn't the end that that partnership, the most successful World SBK had ever seen, deserved. However, this misfortune had promoted Toprak to the front for his final hurrah with Yamaha. And if you thought Portimao was special, Jerez was off the scale. There were only three corners where Razgat Lioglu and Bautista didn't swap places. 38 passes for the lead. Often at the final corner for Bautista to come on by, Toprak standing him up in the middle of it. World SBK was going out in some style into the winter after 2023 season had finished. Both of them so determined to beat each other, leaving nothing on the table. Just when you thought Bautista may have had clear air for long enough, Top Rack would come straight through. This was back into turn one. Bautista firing it back at turn two. Rinaldi, Agata, Gardner and Petrucci watching on in a 12-wheeler at the front of the final race of the year. Turn nine and ten, here we go again. Razgatlioglu this time with the first chance. Bautista repaying the favour. Surely the Yamaha wouldn't outdo the Ducati to turn 11. Oh yes it did. Through he came, Razgatlioglu riding the best we'd ever seen him. Bautista likewise, determined to end his championship year with three wins in the final round at home. Top rack determined to make sure that didn't happen. Both of them absolutely on the edge. With two laps to go, Bautista came back through at turn one. Razgatlioglu came back through on the exit and that could have been that. He led for the next lap and a half. And the final sector of the season was arguably one of the best World SVK had ever seen. Building all the way through the ferociously fast turn 12. Bautista let the brakes off into turn 13. Again, top rack turning under him. This time, a run to the line. Razgatlioglu, surely with the Yamaha power, wasn't going to hold on, but he did. Razgat Lioglu responded to his Portimao defeat by signing off in style in 2023. However, an old foe had crept up on top rack. Track limits on the exit of the final corner on the last lap meant that the result didn't stand, much to his disappointment. We caught the moment he was told in pit lane. It was true, it was the only time Top Rack exceeded track limits at the final corner all race. Bautista celebrated regardless, Top Rack couldn't believe his luck. In a big battle uh, with Alvaro, like uh, uh, Portimao, but uh, this time I don't have a like again. Because... Anyway, the battle has been the battle. No, it doesn't matter the result, but I'm happy. First, second, I'm happy. I enjoy a lot. Thank you very much, mate.
The final chapter was also done for A after nine years in green with remarkable scenes in pit lane. I'm leaving an incredible team. It's the last day in, in green. It's been a whirlwind journey and you know, something I'll never forget. And we had something very special at the end of the day. And uh, we wish you the best luck for uh, your new chapter. He will try it earlier than you. Last time, Johnny. <laughs> After World SBK Executive Director Gregorio Levia shared a moment with them, the Titanic Trio led a special parade lap with over 700 bikes on track for the final time as we've seen them for the last two years. We'll let the pictures do the rest of the talking. Two days later, winter testing, and our first chance to see a certain someone in blue. But who? Go right in blue. Just so weird. Cool though, right? Cool, but weird. <laughs> I like it. I, I like, like it. it. Yeah. I feel like a top of work. Yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh, not one. Well. That's right, Jonathan Ray had his first chance to get on Yamaha machinery ahead of 2024. Oh, how interesting this is going to be. As well as that, Alex Lowe has a new teammate in Axel Bassani who replaces Ray at Kawasaki. Andre Yanone returns to World Championship competition with Go 11 Ducati. And Niccolo Puliga graduates to join Bautista in the factory team and was already ahead of him in testing. Scott Redding also has a new home in 2024 at Bonova Action BMW as top rack class Gatley Oglu moves to replace him. Perhaps the golden era is just beginning. Thank you so much for watching. See you next year in Australia to do it all over again.